Hey, it's Bob from Wham's Tech, and today we're going to continue with our Gamify Your Glide app series. This is episode five, Inventory and Item Store. This is one of the ones that I know has been most requested. In today's video, we're going to create an online or an in-app store that uses our in-app currency in which when the items that we purchase will be added to our inventory and our inventory will be capped off at a number that you specify. So just like all the other videos, we're gonna start off by creating a new sheet and let's start with our store. So I'm gonna create a new sheet here called store or we can call it shop or item store or whatever else you wanna call it, right? And we need to create the items for our store. So first we have to create our column headers, something to the effect of what the item is. We can say like item name. We need the item description. We need the cost of the item. Uh, let's see, we need the item image. I'm gonna create this one actually in the data editor so I can specify that it's an image column. So we need the image. Uh, let's see, what else? Maybe a rank requirement. This would allow us to set what rank is needed in order to purchase this item so that way we can tier our items as well. That should be good. All right, so let's go ahead and refresh our sheet. And I wanna upload that image column. So here in the data editor, I'm gonna go now to our store. I'm gonna add a new column. I'm gonna make it a basic column image and I'm gonna call it item image, done. All right, so then this should appear over here. Great, I have this empty column I can get rid of. All right, and let's add some items to our store. Uh, you can, if, you have, if you're doing cards, you could add your cards here. If you're doing materials, you could do materials. Let's do materials. So uh, what, what are some classic role-playing game materials? Lumber, linen, <laughs> right? Linen, paper, Steel, maybe. Fine. Cloth. Leather. All right. And the item description, you know, uh, used for construction. Used for clothing. used for writing, used for, again, construction or weaponry, used for armory, used for clothing or accessories. Okay. And we'll give this some cost. We'll just, everything will be arbitrary here. It's say, you know, Six gold, four gold, two gold, ten gold, eight gold. Rank requirement. So this you'll need to go back to your ranks sheet to see what rank is needed. So um, like linen novice can have that, paper novice can have that. Then you need bronze maybe in order to get lumber, steel you need to have silver silver, something kind of easy. All right, and then the image, we're gonna look for that. I mean, if you already have images you can pull in, great. I'm gonna actually look for them here in Unsplash just to make things faster on our end because we don't have all day. All right, so I'm gonna add, let's look for lumber. Ooh, look at all these pieces of wood, that's good. Like that, linen. I'm gonna get like tablecloths. <laughs> that's actually not bad. Linen, paper, or parchment. Steel. I'm gonna get some I beams. Ooh, I like that one. That's good. And then leather. Blue leather, red leather. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. <laughs> Some leather working tools, maybe this one. Okay. All right, so now that we have our 
items. Now we need to create our item store. This is the fun part. So back in our tabs, we are gonna create a new tab for our store. We can call it shop store. And this will be um, our store sheet. And we can find a picture of a store. Oh, of course, all the ones we want are pro ones. How about like a tag with a price tag, something like this maybe. That works, we can do a shopping cart maybe. All right, and then again, what kind of layout do you want for your store? If you want to have a nice diverse layout like Amazon where you have like things scrolling this way and things scrolling this way, then you have to do a details view, right? So in our layout, we're gonna change from list to details view and we're gonna trash all of the preset stuff it gives us. And now we can add in our uh, items. Oh, but first, back in our tabs, we also wanna make sure our store is not visible to anybody without a profile. So visibility, so tabs, store visibility we're going to only show it when has profile is true all right so here's our store all right let's go ahead and add in an inline list so i'm going to add an inline list of our store items like so the image will be the item image and here you can play with how you want your store set up. I really like the cards view or the tiles view for this particular um, for this particular tab. So like tiles, you can actually see the nice image here. And you want to show more than one item at a time. So you can do two of them here, right? So I show two tiles per row. Uh, maybe the cards view instead. So you can see more of the image and then the text underneath it. That way the text isn't blocking our nice image that we chose. We want to see more of the image. So instead of three to one, we can do maybe three to two. All right. Um, we also need some more information here. Maybe we do all caps titles. Maybe we do a, what's our header be? Header could be the rank requirement needed. Now let's play with this a little bit. All right, so first thing, let's go back to our data editor and let's kind of clean up our, our items here. So our cost, it gives us the number, but we want to also choose the, the unit. So no group separator, I'll be at group separator. And then units would be like gold, right? But we're using that inventory, we're using the um, emoji for gold as our as our um, icon, our symbol, all right, something like that. Let's also get the rank image as well. So we need to do a relation from this rank requirement to the rank image. So I'm gonna add a column. We'll call this rel rank. We're going to make it a relation where the rank requirement matches the values in our ranks sheet ranks name. Right, it's only one rank to match, so that works. Okay, and then let's also get our points. We have to, in order to do the check to see if you have the, uh, the acquired rank in order to purchase this item, uh, we have to use the XP value, not the name. Reason being is because if I'm a silver, let's say, that means I should also be able to have all of the items for a bronze and for a novice. And just having the name of the rank doesn't help us with that hierarchy. We have to have the value of the, what that's worth. So we can do a mathematical comparison. And we can't do a mathematical comparison with words. We have to do it with numbers. So let's add in um, the rank min points required. So that way we can check to see if we've satisfied that condition. So we're gonna do a lookup of our relation to grab the minimum points. And let's also grab the rank image. And we'll do a lookup of our rank relation for the rank image. There we go. So now we have some more information here about the item itself. This is looking good. Okay, um, maybe we wanna have a, uh, instead of just saying bronze, maybe we should say like bronze required. So for that, in order to merge two things together, we need to do a template column. 
So we'll do a template column. We'll call this rank needed. And, I would, and again, as I mentioned in the second video, I like to put the words display. That way I know this is for display purposes only. This is not a template column I'm using for linking, let's say. So we'll do a template column. We'll do R for rank. And then we'll say the words needed. So for R, R, and then R stands for rank. So now we see bronze needed, novice needed, novice needed, so forth. All right, so then maybe now our header is our cost, right? Our title is the name of the item. If we want to have the details be the description, we can do that too. And then at the bottom here, we can choose to have our avatar be our rank image and our avatar text be our rank needed display. Something like this. Let's do smaller screen so that we're not using as much vertical space here. That's looking good. Um, if you feel like these cards are too long now, right, you can maybe throw this header into the tag. You can do the cost up here maybe. It's kind of hard to see but because you have yellow and gold. But you kind of get the idea. You can play around with the formatting of how you want your shop to look like. But for our purposes today, that looks good. All right. And then once we have our items, now we want to be able to purchase these items. But we should only be able to purchase items that we have the funds for, right? So to do that, we need to bring in our user information into our store. And how do we do that? We do it through our user profiles. So we've already created our user profiles in our first video. And now we have to bring in that information into our store so we can make, start making comparisons, right? So to do that, we need to grab the current user email. So I'm gonna add a column and I'm gonna call it current user. And current user email, fine. And this column type is going to be a, a template. And we'll do E for email and we'll replace the E with the user email address. So whoever is the current signed in user, that's going to be what is seen here in the current user. Okay. So if I sign in as somebody else, right, in our user sheet here, I have this Jim at email.com, right? If I sign in as Jim, I see that Jim is the current user in this sheet and I can start bringing in some information regarding that. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. So now that I have my current user information, now I can start making some relationships and bringing in some other items. Um, we can probably even skip making the relation. We can probably just keep going with, uh, with lookup columns from our user sheet. So let's do the user gold because that's we need to see what how much gold each uh, our user has, right? So we can do a template. We'll do G for gold. And G can be the user gold, total gold, like that. Then we can need a total XP. So let's say user XP. Again, template, we'll do X, where X stands for user total XP. There we go. So what's nice is that we have the rank XP needed, and we also have the user XP available. We have the cost in gold, and we also have what their user gold currently is. So because of this, we can now start making some checks to see if they have enough gold or if they have enough experience points. All right, so let's make those checks too while we're here. So we can call um, can afford. This is going to be an if then else. And we're gonna say if the cost is greater than their balance, their gold balance. So uh, why is it not, it's not letting me pull in the template column? Huh, 
All right, well, I guess I can do it from the user sheet instead. Interesting. Maybe because I didn't do a relation lookup, I'm using just a template column. It is not recognizing that template column as, as a number for some reason. Okay, that's, I think that's a glitch. Anyway, we'll just, I guess we'll just do it this way. So user total gold. So if the cost is greater than the total gold, then it should be unavailable. So can they afford it? False. Okay, otherwise, true. And right now I can afford all of these items because my user gold 30 is more than the cost. So I guess we don't need this user gold column. Hmm. I'm guessing the same is true for the user XP. Which means I probably don't even need this user email address either. But we'll talk about I guess I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, so uh, how about this? Um, do they have enough rank? All right? enough rank if then else and we'll say hey if their rank requirement is greater than oh not the rank requirement sorry is the uh, the um, the minimum points where is that rank minimum points required okay is greater than yeah see it's not there either okay so user total xp then false else true okay so because i am bronze and i haven't reached the silver status yet you see that i do not have enough rank for these two items but i do have enough rank for these three so now we have some true false values that we can use to filter our store the last one we're going to do and we'll, we'll create this after we've done our inventory is are there enough slots left in your inventory in order to purchase this item? And we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, so we have some conditions now. All right, so now we're ready to purchase some items. But to do that, we need to have a log of all those transactions. So we're gonna create that log in our spreadsheet. So in our spreadsheet, we're gonna create a new sheet and we're gonna call this transactions. So let's determine what information we need from the user for the transactions. We need the timestamp, when they purchased the item. We need their email address. We need the item. We need the cost. If this item, if they've used this item, right? We'll do a check to see whether or not they've used the item or dropped the item. So used. If you want to separate those out, like maybe they can use an item and it does something, and then they drop an item and it does something. These can be two different values, or you can combine the two. So used item, dropped item. Then we can also grab in the image in the description too, since they're already there, right? So item image, item description. Well, maybe not, because we want this to always be the latest image and the latest description. So if we change it, they're not seeing some old information here. So let's actually delete that. And we'll actually make that a relation column instead. All right, so we have the log to which we were gonna record these items. And now we are ready to purchase. So I'm gonna give my app a refresh and we need to create some buttons in order to purchase the item. So here in my store, let's buy some paper. So I'm gonna go to the paper button here. And this is a really lame looking shell for our item here. So let's make this look a little prettier. Um, let's add an image of our item. And we don't want it to take up all the space here. Let's make it three to two instead. Let's bring that to the top. So here's our paper image. We see paper used for writing. The cost. And then the rank requirement. Maybe we want to turn all of these into like the basic table. All right, so let's do a basic table. All right, so we need the rank requirement. So we can say like rank needed display, novice needed, and then maybe the rank image like that. If we want to, we can throw something on even above it. Yeah, we can play with the layout. All right, so novice needed uh, the cost. 
will be the cost. Okay, that's looking good. Again, we have paper up here, we have paper down there. So I don't like having both. If you want to, that's fine. Otherwise we can do that empty character trick like we did before. I'll leave it for now though. All right, and now we need the button in order to purchase the item. So we're going to add a form button and we'll call this purchase item. And we want to set some visibility conditions of this button, right? They shouldn't be able to purchase if they don't have enough gold and if they don't have enough rank. So both of those conditions need to be true, which is an and condition. So we're going to come to the features, visibility, where can afford is true. And where enough rank is true true. And we'll go ahead and make that opposite button as well, just to test things out, right? So let's duplicate our form button. And we're going to call this uh, cannot purchase item. And maybe we'll create a button for each, right? Cannot purchase item, or we can say like not enough rank or not enough gold, right? Let's do first, let's do gold first, not not enough gold. It's kind of, I don't like the wording of that button. That's okay, not enough gold. And this will be a grayed out button. And we want this button to do nothing again. So we'll do our little trick back over here in our store to create that dead link again. So we'll do dead link. We'll make this a template column and fill it in with a hashtag done. And this not enough gold button under the features will be action, open link, where that target is that dead link. So this button now does nothing. And we're gonna show this button only when can afford is false or is not true. Okay. And we want to also show this button even if there's not an, well, and where, and where their rank is high enough. Okay, so and where enough rank is true. So if they have enough rank, but they don't have enough funds, they're gonna see the cannot afford button. Likewise, we're gonna duplicate this button and we're gonna do it instead where not enough rank. And this will appear when not enough rank, where enough rank is not true. And that's it. Okay, so for example, silver is needed. I do not have steel or silver, so I should not be able to see the purchase button, and instead I only see not enough rank. Right? And I can't do anything because I'm not high enough with my rank. But for lumber, bronze is needed, and I have bronze, so I can purchase this item. All right, so now that I have a button that I can use to purchase an item, let's go ahead and configure our form to match what's in our transaction log. So purchase item and our destination sheet is going to be our transactions. And what I typically do is they, they'll give you all of the default columns as components here. And what I do is I remove one at a time and as I remove it, I'll add in the correct column that I needed. So for example, this dropped and used. I'm not using that as part of my form at all. That's gonna be for my inventory later. So I'm gonna just delete those. The cost is going to be the preset cost already. So here the cost, the columns, cost is gonna be the cost. For the item name, I'm gonna trash that. And here I have the item name column will automatically fill into the item. The item description column will automatically fill into the description. Oh wait, I was gonna do a relation, so never mind. I cancel that. Uh, let's see, the email is going to 
be the special values, user's email to email, and then timestamp will be the special values current date and time to the timestamp. So we've filled out all of these four columns here, and now we have this empty <laughs> form, right? So we need some sort of prompt to the user to submit this form based on the button, right? So we could do something like, maybe what we can show them is a confirmation message that says, purchase this item for blank gold. And then you can see what their, what their balance will be eventually here. We can do that, I think. Let's try it. Let's do a add column in our store. Let's try this. So we'll add a column here where we'll have their, we'll call this um, future balance. This would be a math column where we'll have the cost of the item minus their gold. And gold will be their current user. Oh, I didn't bring in their gold. We have to bring in their gold first. All right. See, I think we tried doing that and it didn't work, did it? We'll try it again. All right, so this is, um, player gold or user gold where it's a template column where G stands for gold their user total gold let's try it again so this is going to be a math column where we'll call this future balance where column type is the math, where we have the cost minus gold. All right, so that works. Wait, use your gold minus the cost. All the way around. And precision would be one. Group separator is fine. We'll use the icon again here, like that. So this is what, the, what their future balance will be. So we can show them what their balance will be after purchasing the item. Might be kind of nice. All right, so back in our form here, let's go ahead and add in the image for the item again. Why not? Okay, so then we can maybe add in a message that says purchase lumber for blank gold. That could be a template column or we can just make it a text column and call it a day. So we can do a text column here and say, purchase item. Like that. Make it centered, headline three. And we can add in a basic table. Where are you? Basic table, where we could say, current balance, which is their user gold, right? Um, minus the cost. And then we can say what your total gold will be, right? Your future balance. We can make that a text column. So that way we can right align it and put it down over here, right? So we could say total balance or future balance like this. And we can make this larger, like a kind of almost looks like a receipt, right? And let's go ahead and add in a separator above that total here. And if we want to say future balance, we can do that too. Um, so you can call this remaining balance, but we want to make it small, or even smaller. Maybe, or add it below, I don't know. Play around with it.
that's fine. So yes, I wanna purchase this item. So I hit submit, okay? And now I've purchased this item and I should be able to see in my transactions that everything was filled out. Awesome, all right, so this cost also needs to have the same formatting. So this is a precision of one, user group separator, units is that gold dealy. All right, so now we have this transaction that's happened. But as you'll notice, my current gold is still the same because we haven't done any calculations yet of our transactions. So that's the next step. We need to now deduct from our current balance what we've purchased. So we're gonna do that in our user profile table because that's where all of our information is stored at the moment. So I'm gonna go back to my data editor here and I'm going to go to user sheet and I'm going to add a column. And this column is gonna be a relationship to the transactions. Transactions, all right. Where this transactions is going to be a relation where the email address is going to match the values in our transactions email. So it's gonna pull in all of our transactions per email address in the user profile sheet. And we're gonna match multiple because yes, we're gonna have more than one transaction throughout our experience here. And so now we have this rel transactions here. And then we now need to do a roll up of our total transactions that we've spent so far. So we're gonna call this um, gold spent maybe. And this is gonna be a roll up column. And we're gonna summarize the values of our transactions cost by calculating the sum. So you see that all of these other players haven't done any transactions yet, but I have, I didn't, I've done that one for six gold. Done. Now I'm gonna bring this all the way over to my gold sheet over here too, right? We have our total gold, just like we had our XP and then our total XP, right? XP from challenges. We have our gold from challenges. We have our gold spent and it's gonna be our total gold. Right? So our total gold needs to be our gold plus the gold from challenges minus our transactions. So T will stand for transactions, gold spent, boom. So now you see my 30 turned to 24. And now that's my remaining balance. And because we're, you're, we're pulling that data in our store, we should now see that in our item store. So if I do it a purchase item, right now we see that our current balance is 24 gold. Pretty neat, right? Maybe we wanna show our current balance um, above all the items in our store, right? So maybe we add that as our, underneath our cost, right? Current balance. And this is going to be our current, our user gold. So the cost is six gold, our current balance is 24 gold, right? We can add that here, we can add that as a separate table, maybe above. Again, play around with the formatting how you like, but at least we have that information in order to sh display it, right? So um, let's go ahead and purchase some um, steel. Oh, I can't because that's silver needed. Uh, let's go ahead and purchase some more lumber. I'm going to purchase it again. Submit. So now you see my current balance is down to 18. Let's purchase it again. Submit. And let's purchase some linen. Submit. Current balance is eight. Let's purchase another thing of linen. Submit, that cost is four, current balance is four, right? So because now I only have four gold left, I should not be able to purchase lumber for six gold. You see, I don't have enough gold. Woot woot. All right, it's working. So how many transactions have I made so far, right? Go to my transaction log, I've made five transactions. What if I want to drop one of these items? 
right? So I want to use it or I want to drop it. We should be able to do that from our inventory tab. Now this is up to you where you want to store your inventory. Maybe you want to place it within your My Profile. Maybe you want to create a separate tab for My Inventory. Again, completely up to you. So I don't want, to, I don't want this to get too convoluted. Let's just create a new tab for our transactions or for our inventory. So I'm going to create a new tab here. Add. I'm going to call this inventory. And again, you could easily do this just in your users tab if you want because we're actually going to use the users tab for this tab here. So inventory users, uh, an icon can make a bag or a satchel of some kind. Do I have a bag like this maybe? That's good enough. And let's bring our inventory next to our profile. So in order to grab our items, we need to do a, a relation to our transactions, which we've already done, and we need to display that relation. So here we actually need to do the uh, details view here. So we're going to do details, and we are going to scrap all of this. And we want to keep our relation, our inline list, of our transactions. So here are all the things that we purchased. And to make this look like an inventory slots, usually you have like, you know, three across and three down or something. I'm gonna go with the number nine for now. So we'll do tiles, we'll do three across, and maybe we'll do square images here so we can see the full image possibly where our image is the item image which we haven't yet created. Oh no, we have to do that. All right, so pause inventory, let's grab some stuff. I'm gonna go to the data editor, transactions, and we need to grab the image and the description. So we're gonna add a column. We're gonna do this uh, first relationship to the shop, where column type, is the relation. We're gonna relate where the item name matches the values in store item name. Now, just a caveat here, because we're using the, an actual word rather than some unique number, um, if you change the name of your item at any point, it's gonna break the shop. So what you also might want to do here is in your store create a column called row ID and call this item ID and it's going to create a unique value for all of these items in our store kind of like a barcode right or a SKU number and we can pass this information along to our transactions as well that way in case we change what our item name is that original skew won't change. That's best practice. Let's go ahead and add it in after the fact. My apologies, I didn't include this in the part of the video beforehand. Um, let's do item ID where the column type is going to be just some text for now. And we need to pass that information along. So to do that, that's in the form button. So I'm gonna go back to my store. I'm gonna pick an item that I can actually purchase here, like paper. And in the purchase item button in this form details, we're gonna add one more column here. At the bottom, we're going to add in where the item ID matches, um, or are gonna be dropped into the item ID column, text column that we just created, right? So item ID to item ID. And now we're gonna do that relation to the item ID again, so that way if we change the name of this item, it's not gonna mess up the relationship. All right, now to simulate that though, I have to do some copying and pasting. So here is the item ID, I'll just drag it over here. So the store, oh, let's see, here's our item ID for lumber. I'm gonna copy that, and in my transactions for the lumber, so I'll paste that item ID. You won't need to do this if you had done what I did previously. So for linen, I'm just kind of simulating the fact that we imported it. Here are the two for linen, okay. All future purchases will have this filled out automatically. Great. 
All right, back in our data. Refresh. All right, so transactions. Here's our relationship to shop. So instead of using the item name, we're going to use the item ID. So where the item ID matches the values in store item ID. All right. And we don't need to match multiple because there's only one item of each ID in the store. And now we're going to look up the item image. So we have lookup to the image. And then we'll do a lookup of the item description. All right, no, you're not going crazy. My background just changed. I had to switch scenes. All right, so we, where were we at? We were creating the relationship. So, so the item description is going to be a lookup of the shop, relationship to shop, item description. Awesome. So we have the item image and the description. Now we can use these in our inventory tab. So I'm going to come back here to the layout. Cancel inventory tab. And now for image, we can bring in the item image, image like that. Look how nice that looks. Yes. And if we want to include the description in here, we can. It's not necessary, I don't think. So um, you can put the title underneath like this. We have enough space for it, right? And I think that's all you really need in your inventory, right? Because you want to click on it to actually see the details. So once we click on it, now we can bring in what the details of this item are. So again, I'm not going to trash all this stuff. And we're going to add in an image of the item. Okay. We are going to add in the title of this item. So we'll do a title field. Title field, title field, okay. Where we're gonna have the item name and the details can be the description, like that. I'm gonna do no image because we already have the image here. All right, and then whether or not we want to use or drop this item. So to do that, we can just do some simple switches. Uh, so we'll do a switch here for the column will be the used. So we could say use item. And we could say using this item will remove it from your inventory. Okay. And we can do the same thing for drop. We'll just, so I, I cloned it. And we can just change used to dropped and we'll say drop item and we'll say dropping this item will remove it from your inventory so if they pick one or the other it's going to drop it right or they can do both they can use it and drop it not gonna really matter in terms of our logistics all right so let's say i'm going to use this lumber and linen i'm going to drop this linen now, you see here in our inventory, they're still there because we haven't built that logic yet. But that logic is going to hinge on the fact that in our transactions log, this used is now checked and this dropped is now checked. And so now what we need to do is determine whether or not either of these two columns are true. Right? So we're going to add a column and we're going to say used slash dropped. Actually, let's do is in inventory. This is a little bit clearer that yes, true is in your inventory or false. No, it's not in your inventory. So we're going to do an if then else. So if used is true, that means it's not in our inventory. So then false. If dropped is true, then false. It's not in our inventory. Otherwise, true. It is in our inventory. So you see here that the one I used and the one I dropped are marking these as false. They're no longer in our inventory. Done. Okay, so we only want to show the items here that are true. So back in our tab, 
we are only going to show items that are true. So our inline list, we're going to come over here to features, and we're going to filter where is in inventory is true. And now we only have the items that we see, right? So we have uh, you know the three items, and if I drop one more, right? Now we have that logic in place that should happen live, right? So I'm gonna use this item, which marks it true, which turns our if then is an inventory to false. It's no longer an inventory. And so when I hit back, this item should no longer be there. Boop, nice, it's gone. Now we only have two items left in our inventory. Neat, right? All right, so let's also now get a count of how many items we have in our inventory. So to do that, we need to match up the transactions here, right? Where we're going to look for our email address. That's how many total transactions we have. And we're going to subtract the ones that are not in our inventory. So to do that, we need to match our email along with the is in inventory. So we're going to do a template column to combine these two. And we're going to call this uh, inventory inventory um, count check, maybe, I don't know. Uh, so we'll do template column, we're going to match the email address, so E for email, and the I for is in inventory. So we do E for email, I for is in inventory, where E stands for email, and I is the is in inventory, done. <clears throat> So now I should have my email address false, email address false, email address true, email address true, email address false. And now what we can do is count how many times we have the um, email address true, because these are the only two items left in our inventory. So when we go to do our count, we want the number two, not the number five. Right? We have five transactions, but we only have two items left in the inventory. So we need to make a relation from these two true, co uh, two true values back to our user sheet. And so we're gonna create a column that's gonna match this email address and the word true. All right, so back here in the users column, remember back in our challenges when we created this email true, we're gonna lean on this again in order to check whether or not this item is still in our inventory. So we already have the column for the template, now we just have to do a relation. So we're gonna do a relation to, um, we'll call this items in inventory, where a relationship that matches that email true, email true, email true, here, two transactions, our inventory count check, bam. And then we're going to match multiple. So I should have two items in that relation. One, two, All right? Uh, and then we wanna get a count of how many items we have, right? So we'll do a roll up, we'll call this inventory count. Inventory count. So we're gonna do a roll up, summarizing the values of our items in inventory. And we'll just get some unique value. This item ID is fine, okay? By calculating the count. So now we see that I have two items in my inventory, whereas this has zero items in my inventory, for everybody else has zero, because they haven't purchased anything yet. All right, now we get to determine how many slots you want in your inventory. If you wanna do a, just a set number throughout your experience, they're only always gonna have nine slots, let's say. Uh, then we can create a constant here of nine. If you want this number to be flexible, right? I'll show you here a trick that you can use, maybe so that as they level up, they can get more inventory slots. So here I'm going to add a column and we're gonna call this uh, inventory, inventory slots available. And this is gonna be a math column. And here's where you're gonna put your constant. So if I want nine slots, I'll do nine minus 
then the items in inventory. So like the letter I maybe is going to stand for inventory count. Our precision is going to be just one. And if we want to use units, we can. We can say like slots remaining. All right, so we have seven slots remaining, nine slots remaining, so forth. Okay. So this would be our constant. Now, let's say you want to have users be able to, as they level up, also have an expanded inventory. Well, the leveling up occurs in our ranks, right? So if we want that, we have to adjust our ranks sheet. So I'm gonna come over here to our ranks sheet. And let's also say like inventory, inventory boost. And maybe for novice, it's nothing. Bronze is nothing. Silver is nothing. Oh, let's give silver one. Sure. Um, gold two, platinum three. Let's keep it at three for a minute. So let's do three, three, and then suddenly when they get to beast mode, they can have double the amount, six. All right. So this is gonna be our inventory boost. So if they are of gold rank, they'll have two additional slots. If they are platinum, diamond, or legend, they'll have three additional slots. And if they are beast, guru, or master, they'll have six additional slots, all right? So maybe we start them off with six, all right? So that also means that we need to grab that information from our user sheet. So I'm gonna come over here and reload the sheet. In our users tab, we are going to add a column called inventory, inventory boost. And this is going to be a lookup of our relationship to rank and grab that inventory boost number. Done. Okay. Now, because I am a bronze, I get no inventory boost, right? So if I change this number to a one, let's say, and I refresh, I should now see that my inventory boost is one. There we go. So now in our inventory available, maybe everybody starts off with six slots, right? Minus their inventory count, but plus their boost. And their boost is gonna be one for me. So I now have five slots remaining, even though I've used up two. Right, because I have that little inventory boost, which is kind of neat. Um, maybe you also want to display what their total amount of slots uh, possible. You can do that too. It'll just be another math column. We'll call this inventory, inventory possible. This will be a math column where it's just the um, the boost plus the six, right? So six plus the boost. And this will be one, we can do a unit of slots. So I have a total possible seven slots, but my inventory remain possible is only five because I've already used up two. Okay, and now we can display this information in our inventory. So back to my layout. Um, now I can add on top here um, how many slots possible and how many slots remaining. That could be just a basic table here. And we can do uh, inventory uh, details or information. Oops, this should be the title. Up there, so here I have um, slots possible. seven slots and then I have I can do um, items in inventory this will be the number of items inventory count All right so the total will be slots remaining boom and maybe we want to add this above our inventory And so we can give us a title of inventory items, like so. 
If we want to add a separator, we can. Kind of clean things up a little bit. All right. So our inventory is basically done, right? So we have some information about our inventory. We have the items themselves. We can add and drop. And I have all those conditional checks. The very last thing here will be whether or not you're able to purchase the item based on your slots remaining. So back in our shop, in our store, we need to create one more dead button here. That's gonna say not enough slots or no slots available, not enough inventory slots or inventory is full, inventory full. And this is gonna appear when the user items remaining, slots available, uh, equals zero. So if their slots available equals zero, then they should see the cannot purchase button, right? That also means that their purchase button, this purchase item, this form button here should not appear if it's zero. So we're going to add a condition where and their user slots available is greater than zero. So as long as they have slots available, they can purchase the item. Um, now it's possible that they'll see two buttons here if they don't have enough rank and if they have no slots. So we probably, what, what do we want to, ha what should be the priority? Probably not enough slots, right? Um, or not enough rank, probably not enough rank. Because it's not even possible then. And if they, have, if they don't have enough funds either. So we'll make this not inventory full. Hmm. Yeah, if they don't have enough funds and they don't have enough rank, those buttons should appear first. This inventory full should be a third button. So um, we're gonna add a condition to where is equals zero and their can afford is true. So they can still afford it, but they don't have enough slots and where rank, enough rank is true. So maybe they have the rank and they can afford it, they just don't have slots available. So that's when that button should appear. Otherwise, this button should not appear if can afford is false or enough rank is false. Those buttons should appear as the predominant um, cancel or uh, uh, disabled buttons. And that's it. And the one last thing I forgot to mention here is your inventory tab also needs to have those same visibility conditions. So in the inventory, I'm gonna to go to the tab section, inventory, features, and we're only gonna show this when the profile is true. So has profile is true. We also want this inventory to relate to only our data or only the signed in user's information. So if I go back to the layout view, inventory, right? We need to set the features and filter where the email address is the signed in user. Very, very important. Otherwise, I might sign in and see somebody else's inventory. All right, so those two things are now set and we should be good to go. All right, we've done it. We've created our inventory, we've created our shop, we've done conditional checks based on rank, based on cost, based on inventory slots available. We've done inventory boosts. Um, quite a heavy video and a heavy instruction, I know, but this is one of the um, most important parts, I think, of any gamification app is allowing your users to purchase some rewards for their experience and their efforts. So hope this has helped. Stay tuned for part six. And as always, thanks for watching.